<laughs> so this is uh, what you're seeing that right now is the teen transition planning um, portion of our website uh, at pivotpoint.ca. Uh, give you a little bit of back background of who we are. Um, we are an organization who's been around uh, for only 13 years, very young. Our first uh, 10 years of uh, service were focused on uh, children age uh, birth to uh, 19, 18, 19. Um, primarily, our uh, funding source was families who were accessing autism funding in the province of British Columbia. Um, having said that, we always wanted to be a full service uh, support agency to individuals with diverse abilities of all types. Um, as we grew and connected with a lot of community partners, we um, worked collaboratively with a couple of groups, um, primarily committees that we sat on, to create a teen transition planning program. Uh, a number of years ago, I think it was about seven years ago now, uh, there the government did some uh, meetings throughout the province and were asking families and individuals uh, where the gaps in services were. Um, one of the primary gaps that was identified was um, diagnosis, and the second gap that was identified is when individuals um, turn 19, uh, families were feeling like they fell off the face of the earth and had no place to go and didn't know what they were doing. At that time, our Ministry for Children and Family Development social workers were typically handing uh, a manila envelope to families with eligibility forms and saying, you know, this is your transition and these are the services that are available to you. Uh, that was usually uh, occurring in the 18th year. So families were saying clearly in these uh, meetings that that was not sufficient and that they were feeling lost. Uh, many families admitted, um, you know, burying their heads in the sand and being really uh, afraid to tackle the whole concept of transition planning um, and tell their, their youth child uh, turn 19 and then they were in panic mode because where the school bus used to pick them up or where they used to drive their um, children to school, they were now sitting at home doing nothing. So there was a lot of, of stress and a lot of... Um, really afraid families. So um, in collaboration with the primarily the Langley School District and some other uh, um, service providers agencies in Langley, we set up a um, transition planning steering committee and we started to gather information. And uh, what we ended up with, long, long story short, is a um, multifaceted transition planning program. The program, we decided as a group um, that transition planning is not an event. Transition planning is a process. It's a process that can take sometimes up to 10 years, um, which can be a really scary thought uh, for some families. Um, with this process, um, there's multiple things that need to be considered. Uh, one of the things is an orientation to the concept of transition planning and that orientation is has been split into two categories in our program. One category is around orienting service providers, uh, educators, um, and support persons and the other one is primarily around educating families. Families specifically asked to be uh, separated out so that they felt safe to be able to express their fears and their desires in, and their concerns in relation to where their sons or daughters would be going without the fear of um, upsetting the funders. So um, we clearly separated out and have a parent orientation. You'll see on the website there is a um, a handout that we have around our parent orientation and what the um, program is all about. We have very recently, in fact, I believe it's this week, um, moved our parent orientation program training from an in-person training now being able to be accessed online. 
Um, so in on our website, um, uh, very soon we'll be able to have a link to um, being able to look at, for parents to be able to go and receive a three-hour orientation that they can do at their own leisure. They can take their time uh, going through all the concepts about transition planning. And um, with that, they will receive a copy of our transition guide. Our transition guide is a binder that we put together uh, that is broken into sections. The first section is an introduction to the concepts around transition planning. Um, and the next section focuses around path. We decided as a group that um, person-centered planning needed to be at the heart or, or the foundation of transition planning for us. So uh, at Pivot Point, we not only do we do path facilitation for families who are interested, but we also do path training. If any professionals in the field want to be trained in how to conduct path, we can provide that um, as well. So uh, the next section of our guide then is um, the interministerial protocol that was created um, a number of years ago that was actually borrowed from Alberta. So thank you from for those of you from Alberta because you did a great job. Um, and it outlines some of the key activities that need to be done um, in the transition planning uh, years, such as um, getting picture ID, making sure you have a social insurance number, um, all of those kind of kind of key key ideas. The next section in our guide is broken into uh, nine domains. So we have um, tabs in our binder that break down um, into domains such as um, life skills, education, family and friends, health, which is where a lot of the hospitals fall. Um, employment, leisure or culture, housing, and financial legal. Uh, so as families are going through their transition planning um, process, they have areas in the guide uh, where it is tabbed and they can start to put information that they collect from the various people they're speaking with about what things are available in their particular region in all of those domain areas. Um, contact information, they can put um, uh, eligibility forms, anything um, that they come across that they find important. Um, the next section and the next important concept of the transition planning for us was the concept of a hub of resources. We wanted to make sure that um, individuals had a place that they could go at least to start with, um, to be able to access uh, resources around um, their transition experience. So we created teentransitionplanning.ca, um, which should be up on your screen, and has a, a bunch of ideas around um, transition planning, primarily for the province of British Columbia, but it can be transferred anywhere. Uh, and the Lego blocks are sort of symbolic of if these pieces exist alone, they're kind of dull and don't do anything. But when you use Lego blocks to connect together, you create something kind of cool and, and beautiful. And the other thing is they are interchangeable and can be um, moved around to create uh, other um, creations of any kind as the pathfinder and as the trend person who's transitioning changes their mind or um, acquires different skills, uh, things can change for them. So that's why the Lego blocks are there. So this is the beginnings of our hub. It's weak, I'll, I'll be honest, but we're working on it. Um, we're working on a blog uh, or, or the process of creating the frequently asked questions. And there are some resources available, including um, the first couple pages of our guide. Um, there's the binder domains, there's some worksheets so that um, families can have, here's the guide here, so families can have a quick peek at what the, the guide looks like. Um, and here's some of the table of contents and uh, 
like I say, this isn't the full guide. This is just sort of a, an introduction to uh, what it looks like. Um, so our dream, our vision, is to create transition-aware communities in the province of British Columbia. And so the next kind of piece of the puzzle uh, then is around collaboration and community awareness. Um, and a big part of that is a few of us being on um, community transition committees. Um, tonight I'm going to North Vancouver uh, to the North Shore um, um, Youth Transition Fair uh, called the Exceptional Journey. Um, staff are um, continually uh, at different transition committee meetings throughout the province. The last and really exciting um, piece of our transition planning program is our transition coordinators. Transition coordinators we actually found in some really old ministry documents and this was a person who actually is quite a bit like the navigator, although I believe the transition coordinator goes deeper and deeper um, into the supports for families around transition planning um, that the navigator just doesn't have the time to be able to do with their caseloads. Uh, so Pivot Point has created um, transition coordinators and we do um, have these available to, to families uh, in terms of really coming alongside families and helping them through the uh, transition planning process, whether that be a phone call once a week or once every two weeks to make sure that they're on track with some of their goals and, and objectives, or maybe that's uh, helping to research what's available in the com community at that particular time, or maybe that's helping a family to complete some eligibility forms because some of the eligibility forms in this area are monstrosities um, and some we're not even allowed to use a form now we have to do online and some families just cannot navigate them so transition coordinators like I say were a concept that was introduced by the ministry probably 15 years ago um, and just were never created or never followed up on so uh, the committee that we we sat on uh, created these transition coordinators trained them trained them in path um, and um, we now provide uh, as an organization a host of transition coordinators and what you'll see on the transition.ca website is um, information about um, where where to go to find a transition coordinator if you're interested and that's primarily at um, pivot point um, I think that's it for now um, around our program we are really little and really young our our dream right now we're a fee-for-service organization but our dream and our aspirations are to have a global uh, contract with any ministry or a combination of ministries so that we can be funded and have um, services to families, transition services to families funded. Our primary focus uh, age group is is youth, so teen 15, 13, 14, 15, up to age 25. However, we do um, have been doing a number of transition supports, especially person-centered plans with uh, our adult population as well. Um, we have actually provided a path and transition to port support to a host of um, uh, neurotypical uh, individuals as well as those with diverse abilities from really low functioning to really really high functioning and have had huge success. I myself have done over a hundred paths and it is probably in my 31 year career one of the most exciting uh, programs I've ever been involved with and every single time I help an individual with a path I walk away um, higher than a kite. I'm so excited and so jazzed about um, the plans that were created for that person's life uh, and it, it, just to see the family e embrace all the the future rather than be afraid of the future is is mind-blowing and exciting to me so that's our program at Pivot Point like I say we're um, we have a variety of different offices throughout the province of British Columbia but our model is ab absolutely replicatable um, anywhere and our trainers will go anywhere if um, anybody's interested. Any questions or 
comments? Oh, Lisa, I just want to say thank you, because it's, it's a pretty comprehensive model. Um, I was just wondering, like, how many? So you have you you do it in a number of different uh, uh, cities or towns, but how many um, kids do you do you serve in a year or families? Like, I know some of it's ongoing over a number of years, but typically, what would you say is? I'd say right now we have approximately 450 clients, but I would say uh, smaller than a tenth. Well, yeah, um, okay, I would say maybe mm -hmm, 75 at the most transition um, planning clients. We're sort of just kind of getting this uh, out into the community and, uh, well, you know, getting getting the program out there. But I can see it getting big. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's kind of interesting to me that um, there's obviously, if people um, will, you know, pay for a service, there's obviously a need for a service, and it seems to me then I mean, this is more than healthcare transitioning you're helping people with. So there's there's clearly a need, and we know that. All the people I think here know that. So it, it seems to me that uh, the ministries need to understand this better. So do you have any, um, have you collected or started collecting any data around the program and, you know, the you know your clients that you're serving or sort of experiences or anything like that? Yeah, we have. Um, our organization um, has a great deal of focus on um, research. We have 13 board certified behavior analysts. We are the largest cohort in the province of British Columbia that have certified behavior analysts working for us. And um, if you know anything about behavior analysts, you know that they are keen on research and scientific study. Um, right now, we don't have the funding to be able to do some in-depth research, but it is one of the things that we're planning on doing is applying for a grant through Vancouver Foundation or other foundations to be able to, to show the benefits of this program because we've seen it firsthand, so now we want to just prove it. Um, but the other thing we do is, um, at a, on an annual basis, we collect um, pre and post uh, information um, from our the clients that we serve on how we're doing, and um, we're one of the very few organizations that collect um, therapeutic out outcome measures rather than just um, n numbers. <laughs> uh, of, you know, we don't just report on um, hours served and number of individuals served. We report on um, uh, the effects of the services that we provide. And um, I can, I'm looking at our website right now, and I think it's gone, but um, we do have somewhere a therapeutic outcome um, report that we that we publish on an annual basis, maybe it's not out yet because we just had our um, meeting, um, that talks about the individuals with, oh, here it is, the individuals with, uh, um, that we serve in various program areas. Ah, oh, there you go, it's not found because it's it just being published. So if you look back in a couple of weeks, you'll find um, that information. Like I say, it's a small cohort of transition, um, clients, but our dream and our vision is absolutely to do some research. Um, and I want to add, too, that I really feel like we're aligned with this group's um, um, sort of best practice and um, the, the guidelines. It's one of the things that I'm really excited about in, in being able to uh, attend some of these calls. I think we're really aligned. Great, thanks, thanks, Crystal. Does anybody else have any thoughts or questions or comments? Quiet crowd today. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. I'll just
So I'll take the screen back for now. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. This is Chris Bacon. I think I think we're all probably just a little bit in awe of what you've done <laughs> as we kind of digest. And I think maybe um, as with most of us, it's it's kind of new business, right? Not something that we're all very familiar with. Seen this type of model um, in action. So once again, thank you so much for that, Crystal. We want to follow up or learn more. Is it really just kind of going to the website and then maybe contacting you directly about some other opportunities as we think of them? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, look at our website and for sure you can get a hold of me, um, crystal.thompson at pivotpoint.ca and I'll, I, I can make sure that the, my, uh, I think, well, you have my email ad address um, for this committee, but yeah, please, I'd love to speak to anybody who's, <laughs> this, is, this is one of my babies at the organization, so I'd love to speak with anybody who's got any questions or, or wants to even add um, ideas to our program. Great, thank you.